Good morning. Welcome to the Easter season devotional series led by the leaders of the South Carolina Synod. This is scripture and song. It's really a delight to be with you once again. And this morning, my special guest is Pastor Chris Hevner. Pastor Hevner, welcome. Good to have you with us today. Thank you. It's good to be here. And it's been my pleasure for these last 20 months or so to serve as the interim pastor at St. Michael Lutheran Church in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, after 29 years of campus ministry, it's been wonderful to be back in a parish. As we always know in campus ministry, the heart and the soul of the church is its parishes. And all of those students that came to the campus ministry in Clemson for those years came from parishes. And uh, some of them didn't, but went to parishes when they graduated because they understood that uh, the faithful gathered is, is where God continues to, to reign his grace upon us. So pleasure to be with you today. It's great to have you here, and I'm glad to have a chance to chat with you. And I think you're so right. Those students came from parishes, or at least the majority of them do. And what we always pray is that our students find their ways uh, either back home to their parish or, in many cases, to another parish that they make their home as they move into their adult life. So thank you for that ministry as well. And for keeping our uh, young adults in your prayers and, and in your heart, uh, where I know they stay. I appreciate that. So this we're focused on a variety of hymns for this season and asking leaders, what is your favorite hymn? Tell us about it. Tell us what it is. Tell us why you love it and share that information with us today. Well, the first line in the instructions for my own funeral or the passage of scripture that I will read. And that's the, uh, the story in Genesis of Jacob struggling with the night visitor. And in that struggle, Jacob receives the name Israel. And so a tremendous blessing. But the interesting thing about that story is that as Jacob leaves that encounter with God, he limps and we're told that he would have a limp for the rest of his life. And so that story helps me to appreciate the ways in which being changed by God is, is a total body experience and it's a total life experience. In keeping with that, the second line in my instructions for my funeral is to sing a hymn that is actually not in our newest hymnal. It was in the green hymnal, the LBH, and it's entitled, They Cast Their Nets. And mm. so... Since you may not be as familiar with it, I'd like to read it to you, if that's okay, Bishop. Sure, they I'd cast, love it. They cast their nets in Galilee, just off the hills of brown. Such happy, happy simple fisher folk before the Lord came down. Contented, peaceful fishermen before they ever knew the peace of God that filled their hearts brim full and broke them too. Young John, who trimmed the flapping sail, homeless in Patmos, died. Peter, who hauled the teeming net, head down, was crucified. The peace of God, it is no peace, but strife closed in the sod. Yet let us pray but for one thing, the marvelous peace of God. I actually have it on a plaque that a fellow Lutheran campus ministry participant made for me in 1979. And I've always mm -hmm. had this plaque in my office, even when we couldn't sing the hymn. That hymn, like that verse of scripture, brings together two very important parts of what it means to be blessed by God. That blessing brings a peace to us that we cannot find, that we can search for in all sorts of places, a peace that only comes to us by knowing that we are accepted by God, loved by God, and a part of God's kingdom. And that peace is unimaginable. It is the marvelous peace of God. But as John the 23rd, Pope John the 23rd pointed out, once we're aware of that peace, and once we're aware of what God hopes for for this world, we become like the prophets who bear in their very bodies the weight of a world that doesn't yet understand the blessings that come through God and from God. And so each of those disciples' stories 
is a story of someone who, who had a pretty good life. <laughs> they were living, doing, fishing, being themselves. And then all of a sudden they encountered this God who made them aware of something more marvelous and invited them to come and see. And so they did, and they saw, and they experienced, and they received, and they were blessed in ways that were unimaginable. But having been received and blessed in ways that were unimaginable, they were unwilling to tolerate a world in which others were not similarly blessed and loved and cared for. And so as a result, many of the external trappings of their lives uh, took on painful marks, took on life-altering wounds, uh, resulted in crucifixions, resulted in rejections. And yet each one of them endured all of those things completely and totally aware of the fact that they would not have chosen a different path. They would not have done something different. We sometimes suffer from the illusion that following Jesus is going to take us someplace other than where it took Jesus. Mm. Following Jesus means going where he went. And where he went is to the right hand of the Father, to that place where he and the Father are one. He and the Father not only see the world the same way, but understand their role in making the world the place that God intends it to be. But that place is fraught with heartbreak and disappointment every time we see one of God's children who has not yet received those gifts. And so that peace of God, which passes all understanding, um, is that kind of a gift and is that kind of an assurance. And maybe it only comes to us when we do follow Jesus and follow the path in which we refuse to remain silent refuse to be sidelined when God's children are, are being harassed or harangued or discriminated against, when bigotry robs them of the dignity that they deserve. Only when we are standing with Jesus and saying how that has got to change are we truly in the place that we receive that marvelous peace of God and that assurance of God's presence in our lives. Well, thank you, Pastor Chris. I love that. In this particular season of Easter, when we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus and we're embracing that new life that we receive from Christ, I think that you have brought to mind that that peace of Christ comes to us as we are willing to allow ourselves to be instruments of God's grace and love and peace to the world around us. I appreciate that image. Thank you. Thank you. Let me share with you a reading from the Gospel of Mark, the 16th chapter. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought, bought spices so that they could embalm Jesus. Very early on Sunday morning, as the sun rose, they went to the tomb. They worried out loud to each other, who will roll back the stone from the tomb for us? Then they looked up and they saw that it had been rolled back. It was a huge stone, and they walked right in. They saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed all in white. They were completely taken aback, astonished. And he said to them, don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, the one they nailed on the cross. He's been raised up. He's no longer here. You can see for yourselves that the place is empty. Now, on your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he's going on ahead of you to Galilee. You'll see him there exactly as he said. They got out as fast as they could, beside themselves, their heads swimming. Stunned, they said nothing to anyone. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, your only Son was taken into the heavens and in your presence intercedes for us. Receive us and our prayers for all the world. And in the end, bring everything into your glory. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and our Lord, who reigns and lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, Pastor, thank you for sharing that resurrection story with us. That thank gift you for of, this opportunity and chance. I really appreciate being with you, Pastor. Absolutely. That, that gift is a blessing for each of us to uh, be mindful that the peace of Christ comes to us in very unusual ways and calls us into sharing the love and the light of Jesus with the world. God's peace be with you, Pastor Chris, and with all of you who are listening today. I'm glad that you could join us, and I hope that this devotion stays with you throughout the day. Peace be with you.